Y'all join me today while we make some butter peas, stewed white potatoes with this creamy gravy for cornbread. I could make a meal out of that alone. My carnivore, John Murray's gotta have a piece of meat, so we'll have fried pork chops too. So y'all join me. Right. Hey y'all, I just came in from the grocery store. I've been in town all day. I got my hair done at Christie's. Christy hers, if you're locally, give her a little call. Um, she performs miracles <laughs> with your hair. Uh, but anyway, I want to tell y'all real quickly that I don't have time to cook a big, long cooking supper tonight. It's already six o'clock. John is gonna be coming home soon. So I just picked up some butter peas. I wanted some little baby limas. And this meal I throw together in no time, and it reminds me of being at my grandparents' home when she was home cooking peas that were grown in the garden, you know, and some cornbread and fried pork chops, yes, and some stewed potatoes that they grew in the garden. But we're not doing any of that, but it's going to give us that idea. And that's what we do because today we're so busy, aren't we? Um, Maybe one time, but we are going to plant a garden together. Y'all don't give up on me on that. Okay, y'all, let me put some water in these peas. They remind me of baby little lima beans. They sure do. So I'm going to get those going. They're going to need a little pinch of salt. In them like that. And y'all don't look, because I'm going to put a little baking grease in there, okay? Just for a little bit of flavor. Just a little. I'll show you just a little bit of baking grease, okay? Jack's mom's trying to cook quick. Now you could. There we go. My mama used to take when I banged on pans like that, but I don't know. I feel like the pan's supposed to be serving me, you know, not me serving that pan. So I don't know. That's just my thoughts on it. Okay, and I picked up these little thin pork chops is what they had. If they were thicker, I would bread them and stick them in the oven, which is really easy to do. But they're not, but that's okay. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil right here and let that be heating on about medium low for our pork chops. Do y'all like that big pan? I got that from Pampered Chef years ago, last time I think, and I'm I love it too. I can get a lot of pork chops in there. Okay, this. Now, this is what I want to make with y'all. You know, stewed potatoes that I watched my grandparents plant and we harvested them and my grandma would peel some little new potatoes and stew them and with cornbread, I could make that meal totally by myself. But I wasn't in the garden today and I didn't even plant potatoes, right? So I've got some canned potatoes. You see that whole potatoes with the juice. They're going in here just like this. All of their potato juice as well. So that's already salted. I'm not going to salt it anymore because of that. And yeah, y'all knew this was coming. I'm going to put a scoop, just a little teaspoon of some bacon grease. And I love the flavor of butter in my stewed potatoes, so I'll just put a tablespoon and I'm going to warn you, I'm going to put more when I finish it, okay? <laughs> um, but I do use butter, which is actually good for us, right, compared, compared to all those substitutes. Um, of course, that's this year. They may change it, right? What I'm going to do is heat these potatoes through, get them nice and hot, and let them warm and cook through. I love to put pepper, though. John and I both love a lot of fresh ground pepper. Sometimes I get black, sometimes I get that tri-colored or the, the green and the red and the pink and the white and the black pepper. It's good. Pepper's anti-inflammatory. It's really good. Okay, now, once these cook, they're gonna have a good flavor and everything, but the juice is gonna be all runny, right? Right, so this is what I do. I'm gonna make what's called a little slurry. You've got, I've got one cup of milk, and I'm using whole milk to make them nice and creamy. And I've got two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I'm sure a lot of you grew up on these 
thickening potatoes. I just call them stewed potatoes, but it's got a thickened sauce, so I really don't know what to call them because everybody calls them something different, right? And I gotta get all these little lumps of this uh, flour in here. Don't stick your flour straight into your hot potato mixture because it will curdle. Yes, it will. Um, you probably could drain the potato juice in here and all that, but I just do it this way. Now, my mama, they would pick them out of the garden and she would peel those potatoes and then she would cook the potatoes first and then add this, okay? So this is a huge time saver and but it's still gonna give us that comforting feeling, right? I'm just making sure that flour gets stirred in this milk really well because we do not want it to curdle in that hot mixture. And while those are cooking and getting flavorful with that bacon grease and everything, and I've got my beans going, I'm gonna turn this on a little higher and let it start really getting heated. Okay, <clears throat> what I'm gonna bread mine with, because we're gonna fry them, <laughs> I really want some comfort today, don't I? I've got some all-purpose flour in here. And what I'm gonna add to that, y'all come on down here with me. I'm gonna add a pinch, a nice healthy pinch of salt, okay? Y'all see that's a healthy one. Maybe a little bit more. I'm also gonna add some black pepper, or fresh ground pepper. And I have got some onion powder. So I'll put a little of that. And I've got some garlic powder or granulated garlic. Whatever I get is what I get in the store. Whatever I find. And then I have some lemon pepper. I thought that might be good. Whatever your little flavoring is. Sometimes I'll put some smoked paprika up. I'm going to bake them in the oven. So... Whatever you want to do, you could put a little bitty pinch of cayenne pepper. That would be very good in there. Oh yes, it would. Now I'm gonna shake, shake this for a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna open this and I'm actually gonna leave them right here and put some buttermilk on them. Just like that. These are thin, almost like little breakfast pork chops, but they have the bone in there. I love the bone and the crispiness that gets around there, don't y'all? Yes. Just in case you're wondering, I washed my hands, okay? Now, I'm just going to show y'all. Get y'all down here. I have got y'all literally straddling. <laughs> so much stuff you don't want to know. Y'all just hold on. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to put some buttermilk. This also kind of tenderizes your little chops. Just like that, I'm gonna leave this buttermilk out because we're making cornbread. Yes, we are. We're gonna make some buttermilk cornbread. Y'all, right. yeah, I'm gonna let those pork chops just soak in that buttermilk for a minute. And let's get that cornbread in the oven because it takes like 20 to 30 minutes. And that way, when I get everything else together, the cornbread will almost be done, right? So, let me get my cornbread pan. It is in the oven over here, right there. Y'all come with me. Ooh. It's so hot, it even smells hot. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes. Spin y'all back around and do -si do Spin you around and do -si do right? this pork chop oil to the back very carefully. Okay, here we go. All right, into this. This this really flavors your cornbread really well if you have this bacon up. I'll put this in the description box and in the recipe, show you where you can order it. But in your grocery stores, look near the shortening aisle it's in a section, it's like not in the cold section, but once you open it, it does need to be refrigerated when you bring it home, okay? And I'm gonna do a nice, what is that? One and a half, two tablespoons. Yeah. Sometimes I do Crisco with my bacon grease, but this time I've got this oil out 
for frying the pork chops. So I'm just going to pour just a little bit more in there like that to have plenty moisture in our cornbread. All right, I'm gonna get out a bowl and we're gonna mix up that cornbread. All right, I need one cup of yellow cornmeal. And I just use yellow um, just because I love that color, you know, on the cornbread. If you like white cornmeal, that's fine too. I'll tell you a little silly thing. I grew up with white cornmeal. That's what my mama got. And everybody else I knew had yellow cornmeal. And that's colorful to a little girl, you know, or a little kid. So I said, when I grow up, I'm going to use that yellow cornmeal too. So that's why I get it. So as, like I say, you get what you want to get, okay, guys? With that, I'm going to add one half cup of all-purpose flour. This is my cornbread for two recipe. All right, I'm going to do one teaspoon of salt. That's a half a teaspoon measure, in case y'all think. I don't know how to count to one, right? I know. I'm going to use about a half a teaspoon of baking soda because I am putting buttermilk in here. I do have a recipe for just sweet milk in here or plain milk. My grandmother used that, so I will I'll put that in the recipe. I'll put that one, too, if you want me to. Or I'll link the video. That's what I'll do. That'll be better, right? And then one tablespoon of baking powder. It's going in here. I'm about to use this can. Slap up. Am I loud, guys? I know. I don't need to be. I'm just getting that job done. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Okay, at this point, I whisk this together so all that baking soda and baking powder and salt will get distributed evenly. All right, I need one half cup of whole milk or I've got 2% or whatever I use in here. And then we're going to need one whole cup of buttermilk. This has a yummy flavor with the buttermilk. Yes, it does. And one egg. That was one from this morning, never been refrigerated. There we go. My sister's going to check on my daddy today, so it feels kind of weird. I've not had to go over there all day. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. All right, y'all, you see I've been let that melt our oil. So I'm going to pour this in here. You think I can do it backwards so y'all can see? And I kind of stir it a little bit. And look, I also leave you some right there, okay? Now I'm going to turn this fire on and we're going to get that heating. Heating very well. And just bring this together. I used to watch my mama mix up this cornbread and she never used measurements. And I was trying to get the measurements from my mama. I say, mama, well, how much was that? Well, just a spoonful. And she'd just use a serving spoon and she'd measure. So I literally had to morph her recipe into measurements, you know? Oh my goodness, it was something, something else. I've got a little bit of that milk left I'm just putting in there. You know how it puddles in the bottom? I was like, let me come out and get you. Let me get you. Okay. This little pan, he should have been heating up pretty good. I hear him kind of popping around. I'm gonna pour this in here. Oh yeah. Hurry, 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 hurry. Little baby lima beans, or what were they called, butter peas? I'm going to turn those on low. Let them cook away. Y'all see these, these are boiling nicely. They're nice and hot. So now, I'm going to add our slurry in here. Just like this. And, um, as soon as this gets back up to boiling temp, it's just going to thicken right up. I want to show y'all up close what it looks like now and then what it will in just a moment because that heat is what that 
flour needs to thicken. You see how it's nice and just runny. As soon as we get it up to boiling temp, it's going to thicken. And then, of course, I'll turn it down and let them just sit and stew until John gets home till supper time. Okay, y'all, start the show. Pork chop time. Well, start the show for John. I like the taters and the and the cornbread. Yes, I will. That'll make me happy. Excuse me. I'm reaching under, y'all. I'm sorry. All right, I've got my buttermilk pork chops. Just like that. And how I don't get it all on the outside of this bag, I'll kind of roll it wrong side out like that just for a little bit so I can get that pork chop in there. If that makes any sense. See how thin these are? Let me show you. That's why I'm frying them because they would just bake up to nothing, wouldn't they? Just to nothing. Get a little bit of this flour and see if this grease is ready. No, not quite yet. That's okay. I'm going to start coating my pork chops. And I like to massage on them too as I've got them in there, kind of tenderize them. Mmm, that seems, seems more promising, doesn't it? I've got the oil, I've got the fire on about medium high. Get it nice and hot, 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 ready to fry. Make sure I get flour all over my pork chops. Sometimes I'll even put a little cornmeal in here, just a little bit. So whatever you like on there. If I bake them, I put panko on them. Some kind of dry bread crumbs or panko. So there's just many things to do to a little pork chop. Sometimes I smother them. Yum. Okay, just shake off the excess like that. Let's see if he's going to fry. And when you put something in hot grease, don't put it there and let it fall this way because it could splash on you. So put it in here and let it fall that way, okay? Just in case you didn't already know that. I know a lot of you are way more experienced than me. Yes, you are. All right, now while those are frying, I can add my other two pork chops. Let these go just a couple of minutes, and I'll flip them over. I'm just going to give them a flip. Carefully. Away from me. I think I've got room for the other two. I think. Think being my key word. That's my excess. And first get away from me. I gotta put these in here like a puzzle piece, don't I? There we go. Now then. Y'all, I have this old pan. I've had it forever. I think I paid about $5 for it at Walmart when the boys were little. But it still has that drain in the bottom, and it does the trick. So I don't worry about what it looks like for some fried pork chops, right? And I can slide this in my warm oven when, those, when that cornbread comes out. And these will stay ready for John when he gets home. And me. And these need to go a couple more minutes. So just a few minutes on each side till they're as brown as you like. All right. Our cornbread has 10 minutes left to go. Just enough time for me to get cleaned up in here. Something I got for another recipe we're going to make for Easter. I want to make lemon cake cookies and strawberry cake cookies and coconut cake cookies. Dolly's got out a coconut cake. So those will be a cute little Easter cookies, won't they? So I'm keeping those to the side. All right, back to work.
my whisk, how I wash my whisk is I whisk him in that sudsy water. <laughs> he makes more bubbles too doing that, doesn't he? <laughs> Our cornbread has five minutes. We're always asking like, what does this kitchen look like behind me? So this is what y'all see all the time. And then if you turn, and I'm gonna try to go slow. Let me just back up. Let's do that. That way I won't get us all dizzy, right? <laughs> there we go. Here is what I'm always cooking on with y'all. This is our kitchen island. And it's got, I use it for storage space underneath for various and sundries and potatoes and onions. And this is the top y'all are on. That's the light shining down so we're not so dark like we used to be. If you used to watch my videos, y'all saw how dark it was. And of course, that's the dining room in there. Our cornbread's in that oven right there. Sometimes y'all are facing this way right yeah one of y'all sent that murray family kitchen and i thank you for it it's so pretty it's a little cutting board but of course i'm decorating with it <laughs> and then this is the part a lot of times y'all don't see this is where y'all are sitting okay <laughs> y'all are back here and y'all are sitting there right in front of the island watching me cooking and letting me visit with y'all um so that's where y'all are I hope I'm not getting y'all totally. This is the pantry that we cook out of with the microwave. Y'all see there's some things on the floor I need to put up, but that's real life, right? Right. And then this is beside y'all. Some of y'all are sitting at that table, right? It's enough of y'all. Y'all got to fill all that up. <laughs> and that's our little breakfast nook area. And as y'all see, this is John Murray. He's got his little stack. I tidied it before I started filming with y'all. And those are his pajama pants. I live, that's what I live with. And so I decided a long time ago, either we were going to fuss or I was just going to let him do stuff like that all over the house. So, so he won, right? <laughs> and these are my dirty windows that I'm trying to show y'all the cows. There's some of our cows. This is our view from the breakfast nook. Our cornbread. We're gonna turn that off because that sounds aggravating. Yummy. This little number eight pan, it never does turn loose that cornbread right in the teeny middle center there. It always is acting up. You'll see. <gasps> Look at there. It made a liar out of me. I need to say that every time with y'all. It usually pulls that little piece off in the middle. But do you see this? It's nice and crispy. It'll keep it that way. Jacks, Mama's making cornbread now. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> he loves to fuss when I'm on here. Anyway, I'll use a little tea towel or something and cover it and keep it warm. I'll show you what I do just to rinse this out. All right, I will take my towel, especially because I spilled a little bit on the side. Yes, I did. And I'll just Clean it like that. Rinse it really good. And it's still hot, y'all. Okay? And I'm going to put this right back in the oven. That way it won't rust and it'll be nice and ready for next time. Okay, y'all are always asking me what am I doing with my grease or my oil after I use it. I have a clean jar. Y'all remember when you used to use mayonnaise jars? I know you didn't even have to buy a jar. Now they're plastic, right? I know. 
So anyway, I take a jar and I've got a strainer on it. And I carefully clean with this oil. And y'all see I'm putting this over in the sink because this is liable to spill everywhere, right? So I just put it somewhere that might be contained a little bit. And I'm just patient with it. Uh-oh. You see, I spilled it. And then I don't pour out the rest of that. That makes some good gravy, wouldn't it? I know it would. I know I almost want to keep it. But anyway, I'm going to put this in the garbage. I'm going to scrape it in there. I'll use like a kind of tilt y'all that way, show y'all what I'm doing. I'm just going to put this over in the garbage. We're not going to do gravy tonight. We're just going to have the peas and the butter beans and the, I mean, the butter beans and the cornbread and the stewed potatoes. Yeah, that sure would have made some good gravy. Now, I'll put that there just for a moment so I can get my jar out and let that totally cool, okay? And then I'll put a little lid on it. And I put mine in the refrigerator, and that's what I want to tell you about. I'll hold this up. But um, your oil will last a lot longer. You know, I just poured that up, and it really turned dark with that, um, the pork chops. But I'll usually use this one more time because it's still pretty good, okay? And then uh, that would be about it. One more time, and, and it'll be done, okay? All right, now what I do, twist y'all just a little bit. With this hot pan, first I put something on my porcelain sink, so I don't scratch it really bad. And then I'll take um, hot water and my little scrubby, any kind of a little scouring scrubby like that. Um, and if you have a pan you really want to clean, let me show you. I'm going to go on and show y'all right now because a lot of you want to know how to clean your cast iron. If it's got stuff on it that won't come off and clean for you, you can use salt. So hang on just a little salt like that. Just like that. And this pan is still hot, so I'm having to use my hot holder. You hear how it's abrasive and cleaning? Yeah. You can do that. Keeps it nice and clean. And then I just rinse it with hot water. And y'all know that oven's still hot from that cornbread we baked. So this is going in there too. I'm trying to get it where I can pick one end of that up. All right, let's get you rinsed good, buddy. I think now that I'm running on the hot water, yeah, I can handle it. I can handle really hot water, but when you come out of the oven, I've been on a hot burner. All right, y'all. Like I said, I got this from Pampered Chef, so it has that little Pampered Chef symbol on there. Okay, into the oven, and it's going to be ready, too. Y'all, I'm going to sit out here. I'm going to give John Murray a call and see how soon he's going to be here for supper. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye. Y'all not going to believe this John's pulling in. <laughs> Y'all are going to believe that.